I will chant by uh, shall we start by chanting Namotasa. Namu tasse bagavetu arahatu samha sambudnasse. Namu tasse bagavetu arahatu samha sambudnasse. Namu tasse bagavetu arahatu samha sambudnasse. All right. So we in the last class, we covered the uh, introduction to the Abhidhammata Sangha. We spoke briefly about the history, we spoke about the authors, and we touched on the two types of, uh, two types of troops, uh, or uh, Paramatta Satcha or, and Samuti Satcha, right? Uh, we are, <clears throat> just before we continue, to those of you who are new, um, the mics will be muted up until someone uh, uses one of the, um, the clap emoji or the hands up emoji to signal to us that you have a question. And when you do have a question, I will unmute your mic and you can ask your question. Or you could also type in your question in the chat section and I will answer your question then. Um, Please um, do not hesitate to ask a question or to, uh, or to challenge something which is said in the class. I will not be, I will not surely take any offense. Um, the more questions we have, the more interesting the class would be for everyone. That said, we will now go on to if we would turn on to page number 23 in um, 23 uh, on the Abhidhammata Sangha uh, 2000 version, year 2000 version. This is the first paragraph we are going to start with. <clears throat> when you have your page, kindly give us a thumbs up so that we know that you have the page and you're ready that we can start. All right. Now in the starting of the Abhidhammata Sangha, we start with the word Samma Sambuddha Matulang Sasad Dhamma Ganuttamang Abhivadiya Basis Sang Abhidhammata Sangha. Now this is a, a phrase or verse that, is, that speaks in praise of the Buddha and the Buddha's qualities before the initial starting of the dispensation of the Abhidhammata Sangha. Now this shows, this shows, on one side it shows the sort of the spiritual nature by which the academics of the ancient time conducted their studies and conducted their Dhamma related activities. This speaks a lot about, this is in another way, a sort of a devotional sort of were spoken in devotion of the Buddha, the Buddha's Dhamma and the value of the Buddha and the Dhamma, right? The Buddha and the Dhamma. Moving on to the second verse. This is where we start the teachings of the Abhidhamma, right? If you would now turn to page number 25 on the same version, uh, year 2000. Tata buddha vidamma tha chatuddha paramatta to chittan chaita sikhan rupa nibbhanang iti sabbada. Now, within the study of Abhidhamma, you might have gone through the chapters already. You will see that the Abhidhamma the Sangha or the compendium of Abhidhamma speaks about the four ultimate realities. 
the four ultimate realities. Now, with regard, it is with regards to the four ultimate realities that the whole Abhidhammata Sangha is divided into chapters and taught. Now, just to touch on the Paramatta Satcha and Samuti Satcha, I will briefly explain again, briefly go through Paramatta and Samuti again. If you have any questions, you can ask afterwards and we will continue along. Now, when it comes to, because we are talking in Abhidhamma, we, it is not, I've explained, as I've explained before, it is quite different the way that it is taught, the way that the language, language is used is quite different from how the sutras are displayed in the Tipitaka. The Abhidhamma, the Abhidhamma specifically focuses on phenomena, phenomena being the ultimate realities. Now, the ultimate realities, uh, the ultimate realities are those realities that exist by its own right, right? It does not exist by the support of another phenomena. It exists by its own right, right? Whereas when it comes to Samuti Satcha, Samuti Satcha exists not by its own right. It does not it does not have its own intrinsic nature, but rather it is a combination of factors, a combination of phenomena, and of course, the name or the way that we have learned to refer to these phenomena. Now, an example of Samhati Satcha is, for example, a man a woman, a person, a human being, an animal, a cup, a saucer, a TV, a computer. These are examples of what Samuti Satcha is. Samuti Satcha, Samuti Satcha is, is something which lacks what in Pali, an intrinsic nature in Pali, it is called Sambhava Lakhana, right? So, these, this is the disparity between what ultimate reality is and what Samuti Satcha is. In Paramatta Satcha, when we say that it exists by its own right, owning its own intrinsic nature, do not sort of see this as something which is there permanently. Even the ultimate realities are impermanent. Nothing in this world, nothing in this samsara is permanent. The ultimate realities arise and pass away. The ultimate realities go through a process of upada arising, titi and banga. Titi is a processing of the sustenance moment and banga is a dissolution moment. Just as a samuti satcha would have, right? Uh, just as a Samuti Satcha would have, everything in this samsara arises and passes away. So please do not understand Paramatta Satcha in a way, in a way that you would think that a phenomena exists and because of this phenomena, things happen. No, it is not like that. It is like, we will be going deep into it in the chapter that we are going to do today, the Chitta chapter that we would be going today, we will be dwelling deeper into the way in terms of consciousness, chitta, what a paramatha satcha or how a paramatha satcha operates, right? Do we have any questions? Clap emoji if you do, please. All right. Moving on. Now, in the suttas, we have, we have studied, we have learned, we have heard the panchaskhanda or the aggregates, the five aggregates. We sometimes refer to the five aggregates as also the five aggregates of clinging. But the five aggregates of clinging and the five aggregates are different. We'll come to that later. But 
the five aggregates, what are the five aggregates? Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana. Right? Matter, sensations, perceptions, mental concomitants, and consciousness. Vinyana. In parallel, Abhidhamma would have Chitta, Chetasika, Rupa, Nibbana. Right? Consciousness, mental factors, uh, materiality or matter, uh, rather materiality, not matter, materiality, and nibbana, right? Enlightenment, or we usually do not translate the word nibbana. Now, the sutras, the panchaskanda in the sutras, very much can or exists within the paramatas or the ultimate realities mentioned in the Abhidhamma. How? Now, if we are to take Chitta, Chitta is the Vinyana that is spoken of in the Suttas. Right? Is the Vinyana that is spoken of in the Suttas or for those of you who do not understand uh, the Pali, Chitta consciousness is the Vinyana consciousness that we speak about in the Suttas. The Chetasikas or the Chaitasikas or the mental factors in Abhidhamma are the Vedana or sensations in the Panchas or in the Suttas, are the Sanya or perception in the Suttas again, and also the mental concomitants in the Suttas. So the sensations, the perceptions, and mental concomitants in mentioned within the sutra, sutras as three different aggregates are all included within Chetasika, or the mental factors mentioned or taught in Abhidhamma. Rupa, the materiality in Abhidhamma, includes all matters spoken of in the suttras. And Nibbana exists on its own. Right? Nibbana exists on its own. Now, within, now, Nibbana exists on its own. Let us, let us leave it at that. Right? The word Paramatta, the word Paramatta means now Parama, Parama, P A R A M A, Parama means highest, exalted, deeper. Right? That is the word of Parama. Right? Final is another term Parama uses. Atta is a thing or reality. Right? So Paramatta is initially the final form we can take it as, or we can take it as ultimate reality. Right? Ultimate reality. Now, this is, it is very important that we understand the difference between ultimate and conventional reality when it comes to the study of Abhidhamma, right? I taught or I used the word Vohara Samuti in the earlier class. Now, Vohara Samuti, Vohara is how we refer or we have learned to refer to things. For example, we would call a, well, we would call a form of a chair a chair. We learn to refer to it in that sort of way. We would call a form of house a house. We learn now that is vohara panyati or a vohara samuti, right? Vohara initially what it means is a kind of a reference, a word that you use to sort of refer to a certain object, right? Vohara Samutis are also very much a part of Samuti structures. It is as if, for example, we, we, the names that we have been given, right? It is a Vohara Samuti, right? Moving on, right? Moving on. <clears throat> right. Paragraph number three. Page number 27. Tatta chittan tava chatup vidan hoti. Kama vacharan rupa vacharan arupa vacharan loko taran chati. 
right? Now we are starting, we are starting our entrance into the Abhidhamma, right? Tatta chittantava chatubhidam hoti, right? Of the ultimate realities, now this is the gathas are continuing, remember the stanzas are continuing. Of the, of the ultimate realities, consciousness is fourfold. Kama vacharam, rupa vacharam, arupa vacharam, lokotaram chati. Right? Now, lokotaram chati. Now, when it comes to consciousness, when it comes to uh, when it comes to we deal, we are in page number twenty-seven. When it comes to consciousness, right? Now, what is a consciousness, right? In the commentaries, the consciousness or consciousness has been um, sort of um, the commentators have attempted to explain to us what a consciousness is using a couple number three specifically three examples the example <clears throat> of the of it being a sort of agent right of it being a sort of agent, right? Now, what does that mean? Now, a consciousness, if it is an agent, now we understand what an agent is, like a travel agent, right? Something that facilitates a process, something that facilitates a sort of activity, right? Now, in the if it is called an agent, now this facilitation, would that mean that there is actually a self and that this self helps in the facilitation of all the activities conducted by mind, right? Conducted by mind. That is one of the ways that the commentators have used, commentators have used to try to put forward what a consciousness is. The other way that they have referred to is as an instrument an instrument again similarly like what an agent is an instrument something which can be used to do something or um, uh, to do something or complete an activity or uh, complete an activity right there are two there is a sense of self there is because there seems to be when it, you call something a tool right does that mean that this tool is there all the time right now that too is a little bit of an unclear way to put forward what a consciousness is because why the Buddha's doctrine on impermanence. We have just started off the class by saying that all ultimate realities are impermanent by nature. They arise when they arise, they pass away in time. This Passing away time, we call a chittakana or a mind moment. Chitta kana, chittakana, a mind moment or a mental mind moment, right? It passes away. So the definition, if we are to define or if the commentators attempting to define a consciousness as an agent and an instrument, it is mentioned it is understandable that that definition is somewhat is somewhat uh, not successful, right? The other definition or how they try to interpret what a consciousness is, is a mere activity, right? A mere activity, an activity which happens when it needs to happen, when the conditions necessary for that certain activity to pro process or proceed are, av are available, it happens. This is seen as the best way to understand what a consciousness is. Now a consciousness, now we speak about chitta, chetasika, chitta and chetasika. 
Now, Chitta and Chetasika, these are very broad, very broad phenomena which exists in this plane as well as the rest of the planes, right? Although we speak of it together, right? Uh, and we will go on to looking at a chart which then explains all the types of consciousness. Although we look at it in a way that it is all there, remember that these consciousnesses, we as human beings living in the hu human plane, we experience a certain amount of these consciousnesses mentioned within the Abhidhamma. We also have the potential and ability to experience certain other consciousnesses which are of um, more profound or higher planes of existence. If we are to develop our minds, those beings in those planes are also, certain planes are able to experience the consciousnesses, types of consciousnesses that we experience in the human plane as well. So we are talking about not just us, we are talking about a broad spectrum of life. That is important to understand that we are speaking about a broad spectrum of life. Now, <clears throat> the, the consciousness being explained as an activity, we can equate then a consciousness to being somewhat an energy. This energy is very much as we progress into the chapters, we will understand this further. This energy is something that arises, arises due with the dependency it has on the five sensory doors, the body, right? The five sensory doors the, and the body. And which enables this consciousness to keep on operating within the field that it is operating, right? So when the body is sick, when the body has now sort of is unable to proceed, or rather in a layman's terms, when we are dead, right? When we die, or when if we are killed, the consciousness without a second's moment's break just moves on, right? It is a fast operating, a consciousness arises and passes away, arises and passes away so fast that we, that it is said that even, even the most profound, the most, the foremost of the Buddha disciples are unable to see the activity and the, uh, because of the speed by which the a consciousness or these ultimate realities arise and pass away, right? Arise and pass away. So, uh, when it comes to consciousness, now a conscious, the consciousness in Abhidhamma, there are 89 or 121 types of consciousnesses. Pay, please look at the chart um, or rather, the, yeah, the table actually on page number 28, right? Just to give you an outlook of all the consciousnesses that are here, right? That arise within samsara. Now, these are the 81 or 121 types of consciousnesses that we have the potential to experience in samsara, right? All beings in samsara, including those in the woeful planes, animals, all divine beings, brahmas including, experience groups of these consciousnesses in the plane that they exist in, right? Looking at the, looking at the table, right? Now we see that, there is, all right, we see that there are consci 81 types of consciousnesses that arise within the Lokiya or the mundane group, right? Now, the mundane group is 
speaks about beings, not beings actually, consciousnesses which operates within sansara, which is not directly related to the experience of Nibbana, right? If I am to say not directly re related to Nibbana, I would be wrong because there are the Sobana Chittas or the beautiful Chittas. Uh, there are the Kiriya Chittas which we experience whilst we practice meditation, jhanas, the absorptions, these are the chittas. So it would be wrong if we say that the mundane chittas are those that do not relate to Nibbana, uh, to the path of Nibbana, but the supramundane chittas are those which we experience in the experiencing of Nibbana itself. Right, so the eight or the twenty, <clears throat> the eight or the forty supramundane chittas that you see at the uh, ending of the table are those that you experience when in the moment of attainment, right? In the moment of attainment, right? We will be going through these in detail in the days to come. Next page, please. Do we have any questions? All right. Now, when it comes to chittas, right? Chittas have chittas have a way that they can be sort of now chittas. We we've learned chittas and chaita seekers they arise together. Right, they arise somewhat together, but the chittas, chittas, there are four. Okay, the chittas have a way of being the predominant factor in our consciousness. Our consciousness is led by the processes determined by the chitta, right. So the chaita seekers do not arise before the chittas. The chittas arise first. The, the connection between the chittas and the chaita seekers happens so fast. They are so well interlinked and rooted, right? That it is very difficult to discern between the consciousness and the mental factor mental concomitant. It is said that it is those who meditate and who go through the process and who go through the process of developing a higher spiritual meditation practice who are able to actually even come close to seeing or experiencing what consciousness is and what a mental concomitant is. So that is why even in the first class, even in the Sutra class, I had emphasized on the importance of having a mindfulness practice. A mindfulness practice that would aid you in allowing you to sort of see, to contemplate on the arising and the passing away of different minds, different emotions and the consciousnesses behind it and the, how the mental concomitants fuel and nourish the process of cognition in our minds, right? Do we have any questions? All right. In consciousness, right, in consciousness, there are to discern whether a conscious whether a phenomena that you experience is a consciousness or not or the dis, or the discerning factor of a consciousness depends on four factors depends on four factors we are in page 29 the first of which is lakana characteristic 
right? Characteristic. Now the characteristic of the characteristic of a consciousness remains to be the knowing of the object, right? A consciousness mixes and interlinks itself and sort of uh, combines itself with the object that we sort of have now or the object that we use as a base of our whatever activities that we are doing. If we are thinking about something, if we are walking towards something, if we are going to pick up something, if we are going to write something, now these are all objects. I walk towards a certain place. I am going to the kitchen, right? The consciousness works so fast in understanding the, the environment, the, the pre-depositions, the, the um, sort of the situation, right, that we are in because the consciousness takes up many, 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 many objects. That is how this sort of this person functions so smoothly, right? There's so much of data being cognized every moment, taken in every moment and processed by the consciousness that it allows for real time understanding of where we are, right? Now I am looking at the screen. I am. I know. I know that if I am to move this side, I might fall off the chair, right? I am looking at you. I am. I am fully focused on what we are going to learn, on what I am going to teach you today, on the book that I have in front of me. But I also know that the chair is. The, the where the chair ends, where the ed, edge of the chair is, right? This, how do we know this? Because the consciousness takes up all of these objects so far. So the main characteristic of a consciousness is to link itself or to get to know what the object is. Knowing of the object, this in Pali is called Bijanana. Right. The second is the rasa or the function of the consciousness. Right. The function of the consciousness remains to be all the time, right, to be the forerunner. Right. We operate understanding what. Is it that we should be doing? Am I going to do nothing? Am I going to walk? Am I going to talk? Am I going to cook? Am I going to eat? Right? The mind, depending on the mind, right, the object that we choose to take, right, the chetasikas then aids in sort of nourishing that process, aiding the process, making the process richer by where now we understand the whole experience more deeply, right? More deeply. But the mind is the forerunner. That is its function to be the forerunner in, to be the forerunner in this cognitive process. Do we understand? Can I have a thumbs up if we do? Or a clap if you have a question? Where are my thumbs ups? Okay, I can, Sajini, I can see your thumbs up. Yeah, wonderful. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Good. Any questions? Clap emojis? No. All right. Wonderful. Moving forward. The second is the function, right? To be the forerunner, right? The third is the kitchen, right? I'm sorry. The third is the Pachupatthana, the manifestation, right? The manifestation of consciousness. Now, how does, how does the experience of the object reflect on the way that we are going to now enact the process following the knowing of the object? Right? What are we going to do about it? What is it? 
what is it that we are going to what is it that we are going to do with the object that we have just cognized right that is also determined by the consciousness right determined by the consciousness the fourth is the proximate cause right now what is the proximate cause the proximate cause of a consciousness is now what the proximate cause now let us try to understand this word proximate cause is what allows a consciousness to do what it does what is that nama and rupa right nama and rupa allows of the consciousness to do what it does right the the without the nama the rupa will not sustain without the rupa the nama will not be able to sustain itself the nama and rupa are the proximate causes right of consci of this chitta right do we understand right do we understand right did we understand uh, padatta uh, pachupattana manifestation please do not be sort of uh, in any way embarrassed or you know it is if clap uh, use a clap emoji if you have a question right may i then ask someone what pachupattana and padattana is Mm, who shall we ask? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Samantha. Um. Uh, Samantha, yes, what okay. is manifestation, Samantha? Um. Oh. Um. <laughs> Um, sorry, Bante, I was um, busy writing. <laughs> I was um, writing. I had to um, um, go back and reflect, Bante. I'll probably okay. give you an answer. All right, Samantha, I'm going to explain it again. Yeah. Right? Manifestation, right? How, what, or Pachupatthana is a consciousness has to continue it can't arise and then decide no i'm not going to do this right so pachupatthana pachupatthana is or manifestation is the consciousness continues itself right the continuity of processes it is mentioned in the book the continuity of processes the continuity of processes that is what allows us to have a memory that is what allows for us to remember our names remember uh, have a life um, um, remember the experiences and the teachings and the education and the decorums that is pachupattana the consciousness right continues right a consciousness continues why then what how is a chaitasika not that because a chaitasika depends it's the way a chaitasika operate depends on how a consciousness operates so consciousness needs to continue for the chaitasikas to fall in line right do we now understand samantha chaitasika to work bante i'm sorry um, for the try to seek her, uh, to operate um so the con uh, does it uh, forms as an act of identification of the helps the consciousness um thank you very much of objects. thank you very much now when we learn um when we learn we learn the chitters and the chaitasikas right mm -hmm. and 
I remember I went through the same sort of um, difficulty in understanding mm -hmm. because, you know, because we learn it separately, we think that, okay, the, the chitta arises and then the chitta seekers looks at this and then follows on, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But actually, the chitta seekers, when the chittas arise, this energy, this nature within it with itself, the chitta seekers are operational, right? Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. as if it it sort of that this consciousness is sort of interlinked with the those respective chaita seekers, right? Okay. But the mm -hmm. sort of the moment difference is so subtle. It's so so subtle, right? That mm -hmm. even venerable Sariputta would not be able to see it. The time mm -hmm. difference, right? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Being when a consciousness arises and when a child is equal, it happens so fast, and the difference between it is so subtle that even Venerable Sariputta would not be able to uh, sort of see. The Buddha is able to see, right? So, do, do I answer your question, Samantha? Um, yes, thank you, Bante. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, then the process. Bhante, there's a question. Can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah. Bhante, what you say is uh, uh, there's a time gap between consciousness and uh, uh, mental factor, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but um, it says somewhere in uh, later stage actually, ekupada. That means it's simultaneous. It? Arises yeah. together. Yeah. So yeah, arises together. Yeah, the 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 it arises together. The natures within the natures, there is no time gap, right? The natures, the nature of Chaita Sikha, the nature of Chaita Sikha exists or is a part of the respective consciousnesses which are there, right? Now, when we come, when we finish. The Chitta and the Chaita Sikha, the chapters, we come to that section where we sort of associate the connection between the Chittas and the Chaita Sikha, which is the most fun part in Abhidhamma. <laughs> right? So, there we learn about the Ekupa, the Ekud Nirodha, where it arises together, where it falls apart together. Right? So, the natures are very much existent with the respective consciousness. There is no time gap. Right? There is no time gap. Now, the proximate cause, what is the reason by which uh, the chittas are able to do the functions that it does? That is because of nama and rupa. Right? Now, when it comes to consciousness, right, <clears throat> the 81 or 121 types of consciousness, the 81, 121 types of consciousness are divisible into groups, right? Some of these groups being, right? Now, we there is the mundane consciousness. Can we come back to page number 28, please? Right? We have the 81 types of mundane chittas, which is the uh, Loki chittas. We have the eight or 40 types of supramundane chittas. Now, that is them. There are two groups there. Those which are mundane, lokiya, and those which are supramundane or uh, lokotra. Right? What is the meaning of the word lokotra? Loka uttara lokotra. Loka uttara. Loka is the world or sansara that we live in. Right, that we are in, that we share, Uttar is that which goes beyond, that which goes beyond, right? That which goes beyond. So, in, um, so then we there, we have two groups. Then we have the Akusalas, right? The unwholesome, actually, before that, we have the Chittas that only arise, or those which those chittas that arise associating 
the karma, the five senses, which we refer to as the karma vachara, right? Then we have the consciousnesses which associate the rupa or rupa vachara. Now, rupa, what it means in rupa vachara is rupa, we'll explain karma vachara first, karma a vacharo titi kama vacharo, right? That which interacts with the five senses, the consciousnesses which interact with the five senses is what is called at the consciousnesses of the sensual plane, right? These consciousnesses associate and work with the sensual every every sensual object in this samsara right this in a way explains as to why we are humans are by nature so attracted to the pleasing of the five senses all that we seem to be doing as a human living if we are living a mundane life is to focus on pleasing and pleasurizing these five senses. What are the five senses? Chakku sota ghana jibha khaya. The eye base or the eye base, chakku sota the ear, uh, ghana the nose, jibha the tongue or the taste, and then the khaya the sensual, the, the, uh, the sense of touch or feeling, right? In all of our experiences in living, in living, we see that what we seem to be consistently doing is to maintain, to pleasurize these five senses. So when people come into Buddhism, when people start practicing Buddhism, when people determine to go deeper into the higher states, that the Buddha has taught us through meditation, some of us might contemplate or think, you know, why is it that we have to detach? Why is it that we have to put aside to let go? Why can't I have my Ferrari and also have my meditation? <laughs> or why can't I work towards building my mansion and also have the jhanas, right? Why can't I attain nirvana while going and doing my job, right? Now the question, the answer to that question is this, is this. Because by nature, the pull that we have towards the karma, the more that you try to please the karma, the more that you are attracted or pulled into it by the whirlpool that this samsara and its sensual pleasures acts to be. In aiming for the for nibbana or the lokotra attainments or the supramundane attainments, it is quite clear if we look at this chart, if we look at this chart, it is quite clear to say if I am attracted. Kam, kama a vachara titi kama vacharo. If a person's predominant tendency is to interact and pleasurize oneself with the objects of sensual pleasures around in sansara, his main focus in mind, in consciousness, the, uh, is going to be that which is related to the minds of the karma vachara world, objects of the karma vachara world, right? It is because of that the Buddha has spoken of the, the necessity of understanding the needs and the wants and trying to sustain oneself with the needs and trying to let go of the cravings that we have towards the wants, right? Do we understand, can I have a thumbs up if we do, or a clap if you don't and you have a question? Okay. 
where are the other thumbs <laughs> all right all right good right a kama vachara then we have the rupa vachara now rupa vachara with the sort of the if you are to take the word rupa avachara rupa vacharo teeti rupa vacharo right it is because we are based on rupa that we had these kinds of consciousness now rupa what does rupa mean rupa specifically means the object of meditation that we base ourselves upon the time that we practice the absorptions the absorptions full stop right now when we we will be coming to this i'll be explaining more about it in great detail the rupa vachara jhanas or the rupa rupa vachara uh, absorptions are those which are developed based on a material object now the material object is not your car or your iphone the material object is one of the material meditation subjects in the um in out of the 40 samatha meditation objects not vipassana samatha right samatha is the samatha is the focus oriented meditation subjects one of the 40 samatha meditation objects is that which leads to be the rupa which enables you to gain a rebirth in the rupa vachara plane in the rupa vachara plane what you attract or base your cognition upon is that is are those objects of rupa right so that is quite different from the rupa when it comes to the karma plane now karma this the house the car all of that right now that is rupa all right right but we are not basing ourselves upon this we are basing ourselves upon the senses to please the senses and because now the senses the connection that we have with the senses exists because of the tanha and the avijja the greed and the uh, ignorance right fueled by the mana which which interacts with all of these sensual desires as that which you want to experience that which you want to give yourself right that that holding on is done through the mana or the conceit right we will be going into that uh, shortly right then we have the arupa vachara which is the con considered together with the arupa vachara jhanas or the arupa vachara objects right arupa vachara objects now there is that is a classification of the rupas with regards to the bhumi right the plane that the consciousness predominantly associates the conscious let me repeat again the bhumi or the plane that the consciousness predominant predominantly arises in this does not mean that the person that the being in the rupa vachara plane is unable to experience a kama vachara chitta right this does not mean that a person in the kama vachara plane is unable to experience a arupa vachara plane consciousness right but what we are the important word is predominant these consciousnesses predominantly arise in those respective planes do we understand can i have a show of thumbs please okay yes sachin yes <laughs> right any questions anyone any claps okay wonderful right kamacha rupa vachara arupa vachara and then the lokottara we lokottara we have discussed right moving on page number 32 
right? Now, then we also have a classification of consciousnesses according to according to the kama, right? We have akusala chittas or consciousnesses that arise associating objects which are unwholesome. We have kusala chittas, consciousnesses which arise associating wholesome objects, right? And then we also have those consciousnesses which are neither good nor bad, upekha, right? Or we call them kiriya, right? Those are which are karmically indeterminate, right? It is neither kusala, neither kusala, right? Now, kriya chittas are mostly experienced by arahants people beings who have um, eradicated eradicated the hindrances and gone beyond the grasps of even good and bad right even kus kusala and akusala that is a kriya mind because kusala and akusala they are karmically active so much so that they are able to influence influence the birth that we regain. Because the Arahant has given up through his practice that he has been able to eradicate the need for such a birth, he is able to uh, cognize elements of the world through karmically indeterminate types of consciousnesses that we refer to as that we refer to as kriya or kriya chittas right or karmically karmically uh, functional chittas there are also vipaka chittas right unwholesome wholesome resultant and functional functional is kriya the vipakas are also karmically they are indeterminate they are results of karma they are results of karma we will be going into it we will be going into it in great detail in time to come right now do we understand i think we all understand yes i just asked good now feelings in the consciousnesses there are feelings each and every type of consciousness has a feeling it has a feeling right in the sutras feeling vedana right vedana in the aggregates of the panchaskanda the sensations mentioned within the aggregates, the five aggregates, is explained to have three types of sensations. What are the sensations? Somanasa, Domanasa, Upekha. Right? In Abhidhamma, or in English, Somanasa are the pleasant sensations, Domanasa are the painful or the uh, not so pleasant or the displeasurable sensations and upeka are those that are neither pleasurable nor displeasurable, right? We understand that. In the sutras, the, the, in the sutras, we speak about the sensations in a great depth of detail where they now emphasize on the feeling felt by the mind and the feeling felt because of the body right this for example now the father in the abhidhamma they explain the sensations as being fivefold somanasa domanasa sukha dukkha upekha somanasa and domanasa the pleasurable and the displeasurable somanasa domanasa pleasurable and displeasurable refers to 
the mental base happiness and displeasure. Sukha dukha or um, sukha dukha, sukha happiness and dukha pain refers to the body based sensations. And upeka or adukkama sukha, it is referred to cells in certain places, refers to those which are not pleasurable or displeasurable. Right? So it is important to understand in any place concerning the Abhidhamma, if you are questioned how many sensations are there, please do not say three, right? If you do say three, please do not confess that you have studied from me. <laughs> right? Please say five, right? Anything to do with the sutras, do not say five, say three, right? Because when it comes to the sutras, the sutras speak in very general means and terms. Whereas in Abhidhamma, it is really important to understand where the feeling is coming from, what base the feeling has, right? Now, for example, you are meditating, right? You are meditating and during your time of meditation, you experience certain pains arising from your legs or thighs or your shoulders, right? Now, in practicing Vedana Anupasana or the contemplation of sensations or Chitta Anupasana, the contemplation of uh, consciousness, right? What would you practice? then you would see the connection between the pain that is arising from the, uh, because you are in an uncomfortable posture or you've been in the posture for a long time, you associate or you understand the pain to arise from that specific area of the body, but you are clear on whether the mind has connected to that pain or pleasure. That is very important. Do you understand what I mean? Right? Can I have a show of thumbs, please? Right? Yes. So because in the deeper practices, if we are unable to uh, determine whether these sensations arise or what I am thinking or the agitation that I have in my mind during my meditation is because of agitation that has arisen because of dhomanas or because of dukkha, then there is going to be a difficulty in you moving forward. That is why we go into great, great depth and detail, great depth and detail regarding the sensations that the consciousnesses experience, right? The sensations that the consciousness experiences. I think we've all understood. Let us start off the first chitta, right? The first chitta. Now, Somanasa Sahagata Dittigata Sampayutta Asankharikam Ekam, right? Now, this is in page number 32, right? Page number 32, right? Now, Somanasa Sahagatang, Dittigata Sampayutang, Asankarikam Eka. Now, usually I would ask all of you to try to memorize these consciousnesses, right? Right? So it is, it is important that we understand. Actually, it is very important if you are very serious about your meditation, if you're really serious about developing your vipassana and doing your chittanupassana and your anusati, your recollections, it is very important that you memorize the 82 and the 121 types of consciousness. It is not difficult, right? It is not difficult, right? You just have to... Uh, you just have to, you have to find the pattern, right? Now, for example, now when you understand the 12, there are 12 types of Akula, Akusala Chittas, when you understand the 12, right, you can devise. Now, Somanasa Saga, the Ritigada Sampayutta is one, right? Then there's a division between Asankarak and Sasankarak. 
So there are uh, there are four Somarasa Chittas, no, eight Somarasa Chittas, um, and sorry, there are four Somarasa Chittas and four uh, Upeka Chittas, right? Because it deals with greed, right? So when it is that, you can now sort of connect the dots and make or memorize the consciousnesses, right? Memorize the consciousness. It is very, very important, right? So after today's session, now we'll be stopping shortly because the Zoom will sort of start going uh, a bit flimsy uh, after one hour, 15 minutes or so. But what, we would, what I would request you to do, you have, um, you have a lot of days now, please go through the consciousnesses, uh, the Akusala consciousnesses, and try to find the pattern and memorize the consciousnesses. I cannot emphasize on the importance because if you do not, the place that you will get stuck is when we finish the uh, Chitta and the Chaisikas. And in where we try to understand the relationship between chittas and the shy seekers, if you can't remember the chitta, the meaning of the chitta and what its disposition is, then it is very difficult to understand how the shy seeker affects this chitta. Also, when you would move on to other uh, study, other Abhidhamma studies, such as the Dhamma Sangani, uh, Pathana, Yamaka, you need to know all of the chittas the charger seekers and the ropers by heart, by heart, right? So I am not trying to put you off in any way, right? You might not be used to memorizing, but associating, using, learning this teaching, looking at the book often would help you to very much, uh, to very much understand and then memorize the consciousnesses that we are going to. I'm going to quickly try to just brush through the first, con first consciousness, Akusala consciousness. Actually, I'm sorry, before that, there's something that I need to explain, right? Now, Akusala chittas, there are four, uh, there are 12 types of Akusala chittas, right? And when it comes to the chittas that have the ability to develop or create karma and effect future rebirths that we would experience, all of those consciousnesses have either uh, have uh, two or more, actually one or more of the six roots. What are the six roots in Pali? We call them Ch Mula, Ch Mula, M U L A. What are the six roots? Loba, dosa, moha, aloba, adosa, amoha. Right? Greed, hatred, delusion, non greed, non hatred, non delusion. The first three, greed, hatred, delusion, arises associating the consciousnesses or are the roots by which are associated are the roots the consciousnesses associate when it comes to anything dealing with the unwholesome, right? Now, greed, hatred, delusion, understanding greed. Greed is an attraction. Greed is an attraction, right? Dosa is a friction, a way that we try to push away something. And delusion or moha, moha, delusion is something that corrupts and something that sort of makes things unclear. Right? Do we understand? Can I have a show of thumbs? Where are the thumbs? You don't understand people? <laughs> oh, I think there is a connection issue now. Mante, we have a problem of getting the sound. Oh, you're not getting the sound? 
no no again uh, again uh, bandwidth uh notice is coming bandwidth is low oh yes. It's one hour fifteen minutes. I'm doing. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So then we will have to. <laughs> this is such a. So this is this is this is happening uh, after one and a half, one and fifteen minutes. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Yes. It seems. It seems so. 